Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Milford School Committee meeting. It's our reg regularly scheduled April 6, 2023 meeting. Tonight is a reorganizational meeting as a result of the election um, two days ago, April 4th. I want to welcome our newest member, Brendan Rickert, and I want to welcome back our incumbent, um, Michael Akajanian, and thank you both for your, your time and effort and, and desi desire to be here. Um, as it's a reorganizational meeting, I'm opening it as the senior member of the school committee in accordance with file BDA of our policy. Um, so I'm opening this meeting, and at this point, I will look for a nomination to reorganize and uh, for somebody to nominate uh, a new chairman, chairperson. Sorry. I appreciate that. <laughs> Can I nominate Chris Wilson. Okay, so we have a nomination. Chris, I'll ask you if, if the nomination is seconded, would you accept the nomination? Yes, I would. So do we have a second for? I'll second that. We have a second by Megan. Thank you, Megan. And I'll continue it to see, ask if we have any other or additional nominations for a chairperson. So seeing none, we have a, we have a um, nomination and a second. Uh, I'll just ask for, I guess, in accordance with our policy, a roll call vote. Um, Matt? Yes. Michael? Yes. Uh, Brendan? Yes. Robin? Yes. Megan? Yes. I'm a yes, and Chris? I'll be a yes. <laughs> <laughs> you are our newly elected chair as of today, April right. 6, 2023, and I'll turn the meeting over to you. Great. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. So uh, the next order of business then will be the election of our vice chair. So as uh, John had just said, uh, we will look for nominations first for our vice chair role. So I'll Megan. nominate Matt Sigilli. All right. Matt, uh, would you be willing to take the vice chair role if we get a second? Okay, excellent. Um, looking for a second on that. Second by Michael. Excellent. Very good. And then uh, looking to see if there would be any other candidate, any other nominations for any other candidates as vice chair. So, so I, I do want to nominate uh, John Erickson and we'd like to have a little discussion. About excellent. That. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, so I have a nomination for John Erickson. Uh, John, would you be willing to accept the vice chair role if it, if there is a second I will okay uh, looking for a second from Michael excellent okay open for discussion go so ahead Michael I appreciate that. Yes, go ahead. Megan. I'd be happy to share mine, Chris. So I think, Matt, I think you've done a great job sort of being a vocal and unbiased member of this committee. I think John has done a tremendous job uh, in the multiple roles that he served as chair and vice chair. I think, honestly, John, probably no one does the procedural matters better than you. And so I commend you for that because I know it's not easy. So I wanted to say thank you for that. I also think you've had your turn. And I think it would be a great opportunity to let someone else step up. And I have no doubt that you will continue to follow through on all matters as a member of this committee, as all seven of us will. Excellent. Thank you. Well, excellent. Yes, go ahead, John. I, I do want to speak. And Megan, I thank you for all of that, and I agree. Um, and kind of to reiterate Matt's point, we have a few moving pieces going on right now, and, and we're in a lot of executive sessions, and we have some unfinished um, discussions going on. I, if, if that weren't the case, I would be all in for I've done my time in this leadership role, and I just want to be a member of the committee. I wonder about any translations being lost about what's happened over the course of the past three or four six months mm -hmm. um, that's the only reason I have any interest in even staying in this position I'd be well in favor of turning it over to anybody else or um, thinking about reorganizing in a month or two or two weeks when some of these unresolved situations are resolved so I'm okay either way I really am I'm, I'm, I appreciate everything that You've entrusted me to do as, re as well as the rest of the committee. So, whatever the pleasure of this board is, I'm mm. I'm happy to go in that direction. Okay. Well, yes, Michael. I have a suggestion. Um, <clears throat> I guess I would be in favor of maybe continuing with John as the vice chair, and then uh, if the chair put in your calendar in three months, we revisit mm -hmm. the situation right. and, and and switch. Because I, I I do think Matt would be an excellent vice chair, yeah. uh, but I also generally agree consistency. I think right now is important. Right. Um, so as long as there's a commitment that in three months we revisit it, then, then I would be fine with 
the, the John's vice chair. Understood, yeah. Yeah, it, and it, I think, yeah, the specific timeline is a little unknown at this time, but um, again, that consistency component um, might be in our best interest right now um, and in, in taking into consideration, but certainly I'm also in favor of reorg, even from my position too. Um, you know, I certainly want to keep up with the, the, I hope the level of transparency that I've effectively have, have offered um, at this seat right now. Um, but again, as, as we've said that for that level of consistency, um, you know, I appreciate being in this seat and, and I've appreciated um, working with John um, and just his uh, ability to confer with um, over the last few months too. So. All right. Any other discussions or comments on this point? All right, so um, I'm going to look over to my vice chair at this point too right now, or what was. Uh, so basically we have two nominations, so we'll have to do two votes is what I'm uh, assuming we'll, we'll do well, we if have, there we is have, not a. Well, so here's the thing. So we have, we have two nominations, and the first one's Matt, so we have to vote on vote that. Vote on that one, yeah. And based on the discussion, if the pleasure of the committee is to, well, the preference is to have me sit, stay on as vice, we have to basically vote down Matt's nomination as right. vice, and then when that's defeated, then we can vote on my correct yep. nomination. So it's it's a little awkward, and <coughs> as I said before, I'm okay right. either way, and yeah. um, I'm gonna. Yeah, I, I can't. Well, I probably would be out of line if I said how I'm gonna vote. So I will. Exactly. I don't yep. wanna nope. Well, I just yeah. So it's it, two votes. Matt being the first nomination. We'll it, so. so yeah. So again, we had a uh, nomination for that, uh, Matt Zakili as our uh, vice chair. So uh, looking for a roll call vote. Uh, I, um, I'll start actually over on this side. Well, Matt will be the last on that. So uh, Brandon. No. Okay. Robin. No. No. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. I am a no. Uh, no. And Michael is a no. In. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I do have to get the free calling. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah. At least we're all laughing about it. So, yeah, exactly. So, all right, Erica, you got all that too. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, uh, <laughs> next round would be for uh, for John Erickson as vice chair. We have the uh, the the motion as from the first and then the second. So I'll start with uh, Matt. Yes. Uh, Michael. Yes. Uh, I'll go over to Brendan. Yes. Robin? Yes. Megan? Yes. And I'm also a yes. And John? Yes. All right, so that is unanimous, so excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, everybody. I know it's a, it was a little bit um, work through that, so, so we appreciate. Months. So exactly, yeah, maybe less. Okay. <laughs> so uh, next agenda item on that, then, is the election of our secretary. Uh, in the past, that has always fallen under the superintendent, uh, more by statute, I believe. So uh, looking for a nomination to for uh, the position of secretary. Michael. I nominate Kevin. All right, thank you. And a second by Matt. All right, and then we'll do a roll call vote on that one, Matt. Yes. Michael. Yes. I'm a yes. John. Yes. Megan. Yes. Robin. Yes. yes. And Brendan. Excellent. All right. I appreciate the overwhelming support. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That is full unanimous Kevin. right there. Very good. Excellent. Well. Again, yeah. So we're we're reorg again. Uh, John had uh, had welcomed our our new member uh, Brendan. So again, welcome to the committee, and great to have Michael uh, back in his seat. So congratulations there. Then we'll turn it over at this point to our student representatives that just got a a kind of a a, a, a learning lesson in in town politics here a little bit. So, but we would love to hear your student update. Um, so the first thing that's really going on in our school is spring sports. They're now started. So sports like lacrosse, tennis, um, baseball, softball, volleyball. I'm probably missing a lot, but <laughs> those are just some of the sports that have already started. Um, so coming up on April 29th, um, junior prom is being held at Union Station in Worcester from 6 to 10 p.m. Um, and then Jackie's Boutique for prom dresses is still going on. Um, and even Mrs. Gray is partnering with Sacred Heart to do like a similar thing for the boys, like for suits, ties, probably socks, pants, and all that kind of stuff. Um, another big thing that's been going on um, specifically for the uh, new National Honor Society um, applicants, um, they just found out if they were accepted to the okay. society or not, and the induction ceremony will be held in May. Excellent. And a lot of students in our Metro West program, they took the English AccuPlacer test um, which is basically like a test to judge whether or not you can get into a college-level English class next year. 
So if you pass and you get into the class, um, even like without asking, you just get put into it because it's just such a great class that all those kids should be taking. Um, and then School Day Games is on Thursday, April 13th, which is an event that all schools in Milford participate in. And it's an event in which people with special needs get to have fun and play with their buddies um, outside in the Milford High School field and just like have a day of fun. And if you haven't been to that, I recommend like popping in even for like yeah. like 15 or 20 minutes because awesome. it's one of the best things we do. It's awesome. Fun. That's great. So um, coming up. Coming up for the seniors on May 11th is um, the MHS uh, Senior Awards Night. Um, so we celebrate our seniors and uh, recognize all their scholarships and um, academic achievements. And the class of 2025 just had their auction on April 1st. They raised a lot of money to help us with like prom and any future events that we might be holding. Also, um, big news for sports, um, cheerleading got third place in nationals. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, and that I'm pretty sure that concludes our student updates. If you guys have any questions, any questions, go ahead, Megan. I'd love to know: Are you either of you doing spring sports? Um, I don't do a spring sport. I'm doing spring track. How's it going, Andrew? Um, it's going pretty good. We had our first, uh, we had a scrimmage, and then our first meet was actually yesterday. Awesome. So yeah, that's great. And Union Station, that sounds like a very cool location for the yeah, prom. Is there cool. a lot of excitement about the yeah, upcoming so I prom? Actually, I didn't really know where that was, so I looked it up on Google Maps. <laughs> yeah. And, um, I was, I was looking it looks cool, pictures. right? Yeah. 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 It looks really cool. All right, you'll so. have to bring us back a photo, yeah. please. Excellent. Thank you. Great job. Excellent. Thanks, Chris. Yes, Michael. Um, in the future, I, you know. Uh, Something that, that um, Haley would do is she would, she would bring uh, potential uh, recommendations or issues or other things to the board that the students are experiencing, right? So um, it, it's great. The updates are awesome because we don't know all that stuff. But what I, I want to hear is how can we make the experience and the education better for you guys? So um, it, as much as it's nice to know about, about the activities, I'm more interested in to hear, like, what problems are you having? You know, like, what's going on in the schools? How do the students feel? How, how can we make make it better for you guys. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Else? All right. Well, again, thank you very much for being here. You're, uh, you're welcome to stay, as we always say, but, um, <laughs> but certainly, yes, thank you for being here and enjoy your day off tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Bob. All right, next agenda item will be the uh, approval of minutes. Um, these are minutes from the regular session held on March 23rd, 2023. Any questions or discussion there? Not seeing any, so looking for a, uh, yes, Matt? All right, just one uh, yep. very minor correction, page two. Um, the notes have uh, Jeremy Kern listed as the chair and Lawrence Smith is actually the chair. Correct, yes. Good catch. Set on that. All right. Can you say that one more time? Yep, uh, page two. two. We have Jeremy Kern listed as the chairman of that committee, and it is Lauren Smith. So Lawrence Smith. Lawrence Smith, yeah, right, she's the chair. Yeah. Jeremy may be the vice chair, but I'm not 100%, but Lauren's definitely the chair. All right. So, Chris, I'll motion to accept the minutes with the correction made that Jeremy, uh, that Lawrence Smith is actually the chair. Excellent. Thank you. Motion by John. Second by Megan. Then in favor. So that's going to be uh, six in favor and that's one abstention. Yep. Yeah. All right. Great. Good. Next one uh, agenda item is our announcements, correspondence, and distribution. Any of our committee members have anything to add? Yes. Maybe. I would just share. Um, perhaps April thirteenth is going to be a big day in the district, Kevin, because Memorial is also doing their Books and Beyond ceremony that night, and I just wanted to thank the PTO for running that because it really does encourage excitement about reading. I can assure you that was happening in my house, so I just wanted to thank uh, all the students and the PTO who participated in that. Excellent. Thank you, Meg. All right, move over. Greg, yes. I just like to draw your attention to the draw your attention to the. <laughs> 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 He's here all night, folks. Well He's here all night. Yeah. Well yeah. yeah. uh, Mrs. Yeah. DeVilla's uh, art classes, uh, I think they're mm -hmm. first and second wow. grade classes. Second grade, from yeah. Memorial yeah. in Brookside. Yep. Exactly. Uh, yeah. It's a good thing I have an eye doctor for Yeah. Really yeah. Good yeah. They're rubbing texture drawings created by the second grade from uh, Memorial in Brookside and the student, the student artists. So, yeah, and from Mrs. DeVilla. Yes, so thank you. Yeah, very, very nice. So, oh, actually, they were at first grade. I apologize. I didn't see the, the upper one. So it is first and second grade. So. All right. And, and I have a, I have a, yeah, I have a yes. quick one as well. Um, 
I'd like to congratulate the Shining Star staff and students and Dr. Masterson on the Invention Convention. This is always a big event at Shining Star Preschool. It's a great showcase of the students' projects. There were some very creative um, projects this year, and the students are clearly proud of their work. Um, they invite the, the parents, guardians, the community in, and you can see the students beaming when they're talking about their projects. Mm -hmm. You know, the excitement is palpable. So it's, 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 one of the, it's, it's kind of like a culminating event at the preschool, but it's just a really, uh, it's a really great community event as well. So great work by all our, our, pre, our Shining Star students and staff. Great. Excellent. Thank you for that. All right. Moving on to invitation to speak. Not seeing anybody in the gallery. Invitation to speak. So we'll move on to our next agenda item, which is the revised school calendar for 2023-2024. Dr. McIntyre. All right. So there was, um, there was an error on the initial release of the calendar, therefore we need to re-vote this corrected version. Basically, April vacation was placed in the incorrect week and has since been corrected um, on the calendar that you have in front of you. I asked the committee to vote on this updated version. I have a question before we vote. Sure. We can. Um, looking at that April of 2024, April, so the week of the 15th to the 19th is April vacation, correct? You're correct, yep. John. Yes. Good catch. But, but we have a, we have a school, school committee <laughs> now. <'cause> it, <laughs> and that we haven't changed. We can yeah. change that during. Well, okay. So right now it's on there. We can we can always change our school committee meetings. That's correct. Yeah. But right now it's it's scheduled on the week of vacation. But subject. And to I guess change. I'd open up to the committee. Do you want to do the 25th or the 11th? May as well fix it right now. Yeah. I mean, May as well, why, yeah. bring it, why bring it back? Yep. Yeah. Just a thought. I mean. Yeah. You guys, yeah. Yeah. guys yeah. tell me what you think. Yeah. I'd vote kill the meeting on the 4th and just have one on the 11th. So one meeting, meeting one, meeting in, yeah. one meeting in April? If, it, if we can accommodate it via agenda-wise. Yeah, I, I think we can. Yeah. We can adjust yeah, if usually. something yep. or, or too much comes out. All right. When's the yeah. vote usually? Isn't it? It would be the second one. It would be the second. Does okay. that matter? Good point. It would be the first Tuesday, so. I think it's nice to have that extra week, though, to let somebody <laughs> know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It really doesn't hurt yep. anything. Yeah. So elections on the, will be on <laughs> April 2nd. I would, I would concur with first that. First Tuesday, yeah. It's like a little more runway yeah. to get yourself acclimated. Sure. Yeah. And get sworn in and yeah. all of that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so great suggestion. So I, I guess <laughs> I'll motion to accept the calendar with the adjustment that the f April 4th and 18th school committee meetings are combined into April 11th and 4th and 18th are eliminated. Sounds good. Excellent. Second. All right, Robin. And then uh, do we have a discussion? Yes, go ahead, Megan. Could we do the same in November? We have back-to-back -back meetings, the 2nd and 9th. Can we move one to the 16th? I don't know if that was intentional. Um, I find those back-to-back yes. are hard. That was on you, purpose? Okay. Dr. Magnet, you're aware that the, the week of the... 15, 16, 17 for some convention. As long as it was yeah. yeah, that that's was the fine. reason. Yeah. So if you want to just go with the ninth, if you want to do that. That's, no, that's fine. Sorry. Yeah. As long as, thank you. No, it's, yeah. We can keep it on there, and obviously it's, that's it's easy to, thank you. to not meet. But. All right. Although, I second John's motion. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't the second? Sorry, I've been seconded. Sorry, I've been seconded. That was a long way around, but yeah. thank you. <laughs> it's usually a joint committee meeting yeah. um, conference. Yeah. Well, why don't we look at that? We can look at that one. Yeah, we can always look at that one. Sorry about that. No, no, that's a good no problem. Good All right, so <laughs> motion to accept with those uh, those modifications, second by Robin, then all in favor. And that is unanimous. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you. And then the next agenda item is from our policy committee, our second read on the uh, translation and interpretation. Robin, you taking that one? Yes, sure. And so last meeting, we presented this policy for the first read, and this policy was brought to the policy committee by our um, EL director. And so there have been no changes since the last meeting. And so tonight is the second meeting, and it does require a vote. All right. Any discussions or comments? So, all right, excellent. So looking for a motion to accept policy. KBB translation and interpretation as it has been presented to us in our packet. Motion. Motion by Megan. Second by John. All in favor. And that is unanimous. Great. Next, we have our report from our superintendent of schools, Dr. McIntyre. Uh -huh. Thank you. you. I've got three relatively quick updates um, for the committee. I'm just going to just finish this little note here. Yep, no problem. Yeah, Take your time. Change the school committees. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. So three three quick updates for the committee. The first one is educator job fairs. Um, 
This past Monday, we hosted the Blackstone Valley Educator Job Fair that included 13 public school districts from the Blackstone Valley and kind of general area. And the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education had a table too to answer questions around licensure for any um, prospective candidates for, for teaching or any other positions. Um, that was very well attended. Um, I, you know, I think we saw a lot of good candidates. Um, and, and there's a fair amount of excitement. It's the second time we've done it, and we, we had really good results last year. Um, it wasn't quite as well attended this year, but I think, um, but generally, like it's it's a it's it gets people, particularly in the area, kind of excited about teaching positions and other positions in the district. And, and we met a, we met a lot of promising candidates, which is always a good thing. Um, additionally, we'll be participating in the Merck Career Fair, which takes place over April vacation. That's districts from all over the country. Um, and that's for graduating seniors and grad students from across Massachusetts. We're going to be heading to Bridgewater State's um, event as well. Um, and we may connect with another college or two before the end of the recruiting cycle. We're also trying something for the first time with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education where we're doing a virtual career fair. And I participated in the training on it today. It's, it's very interesting how they're approaching it. We're going to see how it, how it works. We've done a few of these virtual events, particularly over COVID, and they haven't been fantastic. <laughs> Um, but this one's pretty widely um, advertised with uh, like college students, and, it, and there's there's a fair amount of advertising in other places. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, one thing we're seeing, and, and, I, and I think I feel like a broken record because I've said this a bunch of times in meetings. Brendan, you're hearing this for the first time, but I'll I'll say it probably 20 or 30 more times. Is um, we're seeing greater competition for fewer applicants, and so we're really focused on if we find. Um, you know, really strong candidates. We want to move on them relatively quickly because I think if we think they're great, other people are going to think they're great too. Um, we've already hired a couple folks for next year, kind of replacing retirements. Um, and you know, I've been very impressed with the two folks we brought in so far. I mean, they've been stellar. So I'm hoping that continues throughout the throughout the spring and hopefully early summer. We don't have a lot of late summer hires. And I'm happy to answer any questions folks have. Any questions? Yes. Go ahead. I just have one, Kevin. So a while back, we had approved some funding to potentially take a trip to really explore our recruiting efforts. I was curious if that had made any progress, or if we had, you know, you were going to come back. I think with mm -hmm. more of a plan. I didn't know if that was something that was still on the table. I, I don't think for this year we're going to do okay. that. I think that's something maybe if you know, there's an interest from the committee, is something we can look at for you know, okay. the 23, 24 school year for okay. sure. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Job fairs. All right. All right perfect. So for the second one, I've, I've got two documents that I gave you. I didn't feel like I needed to give these ahead of time because they're not all that complicated. Um, now the good news, we'll don't, start with- Don't it. overestimate us. <laughs> <laughs> I had another joke and or I'm, me I'm trying anyways. to be a, I'm trying to be a better person, John. You set me up and I'm trying to be a better person. Leave the jokes to Craig. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our enrollment numbers, and this is, this is the really good news, have been relatively steady throughout the year, and that has not been the case the last three or four years prior. If you look at the sheet that has the multicolored, it's, it's got three colors with the line graph, this one. Um, you can kind of follow, if you look at the, the yellow line in the bottom, the bottom row of the chart at the top, we've basically ranged from 4607 as a high point, and I believe 45, 43, I put my glasses on. 45, 43 has been our lowest, so we haven't really had a lot of variation in, in enrollment this year. It's been, it's been pretty steady. Our churn rate has still been relatively high, and when I say churn rate, I mean that, that's the students that are entering and leaving throughout the year. So although our overall numbers have been relatively stable, our churn rate is still relatively high compared to like the state average, let's say. Um, the, the, the more concerning chart is the second chart, mm -hmm. um, and this is the kindergarten um, enrollment, in, I've got to thank uh, Lisa Byer and Anna Cahill from the uh, Family Resource Center for pulling this data together. It's, it basically kind of gives you the top line is the, the March 31st kind of kindergarten enrollment. And you can see it kind of historically for the past, like I think, six or seven years. And then it gives you the number of students that we add in, from April to June and then through, from July through August. And then it gives you kind of the number that we get like in October 1 when we, when we send the SIMS, SIMS data. And also, I think the interesting thing is what, what's the class size as of April 1st of this year as well, just so you get a sense of like where that's going. Now, if you look at the far right corner, the number is 310 students that have already um, registered for kindergarten. And if you compare that to what we were getting, say, in 1718 or 1819, it's about 65 students higher. Now, 
I think a couple of things are at work here. I think the, the Family Resource um, Center is doing a much better job of capturing more students early. So I think that's a potential factor. Um, but if you look at like the lowest number of kids we've added, it's, it's I think it's about 60. So this 310 is to that's date mm -hmm. not, not finished the rest of the year. So we're already way ahead of mm -hmm. Correct. a completed year. Okay. Correct, yeah. So it, like if you look at um, like 310 is very similar to the class in 2019. Mm -hmm. You know, we're about 12 kids off that pace and we've got like about six months of really what ends up being pretty active registration. And those numbers range from, I think I've got it right here, so I have to figure it out again, um, 60 to 120 students. So we're probably looking at a class of somewhere anywhere from 370 to over 400, potentially. Now, it's, ver it's also possible, because we don't know this, that we've captured a very high percentage of the number of students that are going to be coming in in kindergarten. Now, history says we're probably going to add at least 60. So if, you, if, if it's 370, 366 was our highest class in a really long time. 370 will be higher than that, and that's if we get the low end of additional enrollments. Now, we're having conversations, ongoing conversations with our K2 principals just about, you know, number one, what to do with those six additional classrooms, but also, like, <laughs> where we... It seems obvious. Maybe it should be eight now. Yeah. Um, but we're also talking about, like, you know, where do we go with a few decision points in terms of, um, you know, a couple of new hires that might be designated for a particular grade. We're really watching the numbers, and we may, we may have to shift that a little bit um, over the next month or so. So it's something we're going to be watching very closely. Um, it's a little alarming. I think it, you know, it's hard for me to say, but like we've got those 830 or 60 something new kind of residences coming on between this year and the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's factoring in. It could be a combination of things. Um, but we'll be, we'll be watching and I'll give you guys a couple updates between now and you know, at least June anyways, and to kind of see where we are in the process. And then happy to answer questions. Mm -hmm. I have a quick question. Go ahead. Um, so speaking of those developments, we clearly, I'm sure we captured the address of where they come from. Can we get a breakdown of? We have that already. Okay. Who's coming from where? Yeah. Yeah. I'd be curious. Yeah. I, do, you, do you remember? The, it's kind of lining up where Brookside's getting more students, which is what we're really aiming for. And, and the gap is pretty close to what we want it to be for kindergarten right now. But you know, with a, a 60 to 120 potential new students coming in, that can fluctuate a little bit. We've also shifted some streets, though. We have. We have. Um, I don't know which streets, but streets that are it's in the zone. It's within the walk zone, so we're not. Of both schools. Adjusting transportation. John? Chris, if I can. So when, when I'm looking at these numbers, they're, they're somewhat steady from 17, 18 through 21, 22, and they, they seem to jump dramatically in the last two, th this year and last year. So we, we had then, a theory last year that there was a lot of red shirts because of COVID, and that might be that might be the case. I don't know if there's another that, like it's a two year cycle of that. It's it's going to be hard to say. We won't know for another year or two. Yeah, which is another two, thing we should Yeah, the last two years just seem to be jumping out. Uh, my only I guess question to clarify question is those that this three ten more than likely doesn't include anyone in those new apartments because you have to have. Correct. I don't know how many of those are actually open in between now. They're starting to, they're starting to kind of occupy. I John would have a better sense of that than I would. Yeah, they, I mean, they're, so of the two, the, there's three, there's three big projects coming. The first one is completed. It's re ready for occupancy. That's only 280 units. Um, there's another one that's roughly this, the, roughly the same and, another, and a third that's, maybe two thirds of that size. Only, only the first one is being occupied now. And I don't know, I don't have any data for how many, how many students we have from that address. Which we've, got, is, we've got a handful so far. Which, which is the, to be clear, it's the, the Deer Street address, two, uh, 200 Deer Street, unit 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, which is behind the Restaurant Depot for anybody that's not familiar with the project. I mean, I, mean, I know everybody here is, but I, I don't know how many we have there. And then we have, um, another group of students that's coming from the um, the Bear Hill uh, 
project. I forget the name, the exact title, but it's it's at the end of um, Casey Road, which ultimately goes out to Beaver Street, and that those are PRD units, they're two bedroom units, but they are adding students to our enrollment. Um, I don't have any data on that. Maybe we maybe we should ask, you know, uh, either uh, Kevin Yu or uh, Transportation. Yeah, we can pull for, that pretty easily. For how many students are in those those areas? Yeah. Because uh, it, it's you know it's great that people are moving into Milford. We want that. We're a vibrant community, but we have to manage the uh, the effects. I think. Yeah, and that's part of my thought too. Is it's a two-part thing as a transportation thing because mm -hmm. we're you know, now there's even more kids on that side of town to pick up, and we already have the struggle getting buses back. Uh, that's just gonna put another push in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. potentially. One we'll figure out. I'm sure. Yeah. And those addresses are zoned for Memorial? Yes. Go ahead, Brendan. Yeah. Go so ahead, like, what happens if we, you know, if, if it's over that 60 that we're hoping for, or what if it's 70, what if it's 80 more kids to that 310? Like, what are we doing now to prepare for that? So we're, we're having ongoing conversations with the principals and looking at just class sizes across the two schools and across grade levels. And we do have a little flexibility um, to like you know move a teacher to kindergarten potentially um, if we if we need to and um, and we can make additional adjustments if we have an imbalance in terms of you know in incoming K in particular you know if we have to move a few kids to Memorial or we have to move a few more kids to Brookside we can do some of that too yeah. Thank you. and we've been we've been we've been really focused just more for your information on sure. the walk zones because all for a couple of reasons one all kindergartners get a bus their first year sure. but then it does not impact the transportation in first and second grade mm -hmm. and so it gives us a, it, it gives uh, the transportation director a little more predictability in terms of routing and so he's not changing routes kind of dramatically each year sure. and so we've been pretty I don't want to say because it's been it's been somewhat strategic but we're also a little lucky because there's an unpredictability to this about where students are going to Come from and move in, sure. except we know these all these like complexes are coming in as well. Right, right. Thank you. I think this is a question Michael was getting at, Kevin, but I would be really interested to know how this enrollment, or how many students potentially are from the neighborhoods that John just called out, and it's super helpful to have that level of detail, John, that you have available, because I think it would be smart of us to at least attempt to extrapolate that. Like, if one phase is open and there's 20 kids, mm -hmm. like, we mm -hmm. have a problem we need to talk about, so yep. maybe just take a little bit closer yeah, look I, at that. I can do that if it's next, two, it's, like, okay. Yeah, that, that's really easy to do. I can do that at the next meeting. Okay, and then how many kindergarten classes, Kevin, do we currently have at Memorial on Brookside? Uh, do you, if we were just talking about that. I don't want to give you the wrong information. Um, do you remember th from the meeting? Why don't I bring that to the next meeting? I don't want to say the wrong number either. So I'd like to know how many we have this year. I'd like to know how many we're planning for next year. Yep. And based upon the numbers that we currently have with the 310, so appreciate there's some wiggle room, I think we absolutely need at least a K teacher. Is We don't have a K teacher in the budget, do we? No. So no. to me, we need right. two new classrooms with this number of enrollment, right? And I think you're saying there's wiggle room, so some we, of those we kids might get allocated. We swing somebody right? down if we need to. Okay. Um, I'd like to know current class size, sense. Kevin. So, yeah, so what, what I'm doing is I'm uh, meeting with Vicki and Lisa, I think it's either Monday or Tuesday of next week. Okay. And what I can do is I can bring everybody the kind of the, a summary of that discussion. Which My only point is the runway there. between now and Maytown meeting is quite short. Uh, abs and if absolutely. we want to add a Kate teacher, I'd like us to be talking about it in the next couple weeks. So. Yeah. Okay. And these were like 260, 270 a couple weeks ago and they jumped up. And yeah. I know you can't forecast it, yeah. but like this is the one, right? We're like yeah. that housing isn't going to bring children, right? Wasn't that what we were told? So that's what we're always told. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Eight's you. Perfect. The number I believe is eighteen. Classes. Total, Craig. Eighteen classes in total. Yeah. Right. It's eight and ten, I believe. I think that's right. I'm that's right. right. Yeah. 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 Which is like. I don't know, but I, I can give you like K through two next time. So there is some room in those. If that's true, okay. It's that's around, helpful. Yeah. It's under twenty in okay. the class. All right, in total amount. Okay, thank uh, you. So again, we've got a little bump, but again, like, the, the difficult thing, particularly with the, the pandemic the last few years, is mm -hmm. like we're, we're living in a system that's very unpredictable to begin with mm -hmm. because most of our um, additional population is not coming from births uh, sure. in town. They're coming from folks are coming from other places. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing it. We are doing a better job of capturing students too, and I, I just don't have a sense. We don't have enough. We don't have one way of consistent data. Uh -huh. 
Um, but I'll give you all the variables next time and tell okay. you kind of what we're looking at and what we're considering. That'd be helpful. And when you do charts, Kevin, like this is super helpful, kind of showing the industry kind of needs all that. If you could just add like a few years is helpful in terms of the like comparison versus just one school year to kind of show over time. For which the, no, th those are the kindergarten classes on the kindergarten page. No, sorry, this one. Sorry. So your other one is total enrollment, oh, yeah, but this, it only this, goes this June. Giving, yeah, this just is giving you this year. Understood. I wanted to say like this, it's, st it's stable this year. I can bring you the last like four or five years. Thank you. Of data too, mm -hmm. of what we have for, for students. Thanks, Chris. Yep. Questions on the enrollment side? I guess, Kevin, my question going back to kind of that churn rate, do we know what that rate truly is? I. I don't have it right in front of me, but right. I can, I can, I can pull that for you next time. Too. I was just kind of curious yeah. too, you know, it, it, there's a churn rate, but then there's also a level of stability with the overall number. So obviously there's mm. students in, students out. Yep. With the students out, are they unenrolled after a certain amount of time? A lot of times it's, it's families that are moving. They're yeah. moving to another community, they're moving out of the country. Yeah. Um, and, and that we know about, but we can't yeah. really like, I mean, we, we get information like you know, from somebody saying, on Thursday, hey, we're moving. Right. You know, next at the end of next Friday yeah. or something. In the event that we they just not showing up at school for yeah, one so week, two week, is there a the, yeah? Depending on the level, there's a whole procedure connected to that. Okay. To try to you know figure out what's what's happened to the student. Right. Okay. So yeah, just trying to figure out yeah, kind of that. How does that fall into this churn rate too of, of you know students that are are, are are saying they're leaving and then students that just simply leaving our district without us knowing and then show back up three, four months later. So it's just kind of. And that happens too. Exactly. That's why. So I was just trying to figure that out, right? And that's yeah. just part of I, the. Yeah, I, can, I can give you a little of that, like what we see. Um, yeah. The percentages aren't going to tell that story that you're asking for. Yeah. But I can probably give you some anecdotes from, you know, our tenant supervisor, some of our principals about yeah. you know, some of the things, some of the trends. Are right. Yeah. Things. And just how we, how we handle that, right? So if a student yeah. leaves for three months, comes back, well, obviously there's this huge education gap. And just how we handle that, so that's why I just kind of look at yeah, it from that it, lens. And again, it depends. You know, it yeah. depends on do they move somewhere where they're in school, or do they move they right. go somewhere where they're right not okay. engaged mm -hmm. in school. Okay. All right. All right. So excellent. And Megan, just to go back, uh -huh. yeah. So you're looking. I think you captured everything I Megan's yep. looking yep. for, and it's just more of like from that class numbers. And, and truly, I was going to say the same thing: is do we need to look at adding another kindergarten or a second kindergarten teacher to our initiative budget with this year, information right? I just right. want to make sure we're thinking right. about it exactly so no, I, yeah, I, I can give you kind of the I think that it's really the picture K too because that's where we mm -hmm. kind of yeah yeah and I guess the other question with that is if we did add one or two more kindergarten teachers out of need without moving anybody do we have that space available obviously I know we're adding some classrooms on but it was also the to help alleviate some space yeah front so too. it's I can't promise that if we add kindergarten classrooms that it won't have an effect on some of the other mm -hmm. stuff we're trying to mitigate right. with the, mm -hmm. the additional yeah. um, modular classrooms. Okay. Thanks. Yep. All right. So, any other questions? Yes, Michael. Yeah, um, back to the churn. I know we're repeating that up. Um, it's actually kind of funny. My cybersecurity job, I own our customers, so I talk about churn rate all day, every day, and it's actually a little stressful. So anyways, but so here, um, so when you talk about churn, are you talking about students who are leaving and don't come back, or are you, or are you talking about like students who leave and then there's a net retention? It's, I mean, so. It's a combination of the like, people coming in and people leaving is, is how it's, I, I can give you the exact calculation of how okay. he does it. Yeah, I'm good. Um, let me. See. I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to find that number for you while Craig talks. Yeah. So churn, um, churn to me says like if 100 students churn, that means 100 students have left a district. But is 100 students are leaving districts, and then like 200 come back. Like well, see that what, what's what's tradition. What's happened the last four or five years is we've had significantly more kids coming in than leaving. Okay. This past year, it's been pretty even. Okay. You know, we've we've. I think we've gone down a little bit from where we started. Like our census was in June before the school year started. But we've been like within 50 or 60 students the entire year where we've had some wild swings, you know, particularly like right pre-COVID and during a couple of the COVID years where, you know, we've had like, you know, we, we get a couple hundred kids after January. That didn't happen this year. I'm not sure why. Okay. Um, and, you know, uh, there's some theories out there, but nothing that's, I would say, that I would share that I would say, hey, this is what we think is happening. Um, it could be a lack of bedrooms left in Milford 
Um, but it looks like there's a solution for that. There's plenty. Plenty of new ones. Um, so we're going to have a lot more bedrooms in Milford. So, you know, but again, we, we don't know the exact impact of that. But I can, I, I'll, I'll provide a more comprehensive look at K through two through a few different lenses next time. And I think it'll give you like a few, like an idea of like historical enrollment data. We'll look at the class sizes. We'll look at um, some of the, where we're seeing some of the students pop up. And, and hopefully that gives you a little more of a comprehensive picture. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, is there anything Any other, yeah, go Just ahead, a comment, I just think that that's something we should flag in the discussion with FinCom. Mm -hmm. It's not currently on our a list. We haven't approved it. I just think it's worth mentioning right. because it, it might yeah. be a direction we want to go where we almost ask for approval if it hits a certain number. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, just something right. for consideration it, given we only have a few weeks left. Right, we have to have that contingency plan in place. Sorry, yeah. thanks. And that's no, always the challenge that. with this is we never Understood. know. We never know. And you know, yeah. this year again, I think we're if we get the next round of um, teachers and support staff, we're close to caught up with you know the student mm -hmm. enrollment. Um, but if we you know jump up another two hundred students or something next Understood. year, yeah. we're back in you know we were a couple of years ago. Yeah. We're chasing staff again. Right. Mm -hmm. Close on it, and might be something to put on our next agenda as far as a budget. Absolutely. A budget item, a budget review, and, and if we want to continue this discussion, and mm -hmm. if it's the pleasure of the board to add on a teacher as a contingency plan, then yeah. so be it. This Rob. might be a silly question, so I apologize, but if we are going to add on an extra teacher, do we need to add in an additional TA as well? Because I believe For all the kids. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so, we'd want to so yeah, that's why. So we'll bring that up at the next meeting. I'll have that as an agenda mm -hmm. item, and that way we can go through all of those um, mm -hmm. the, the, those level of details. Okay. John. If I could, thank you, Chris. I mean, to, I think to everybody's point, we need to kind of think about this now. It's, this isn't something we can do in October. Right. Add a teacher to mm -hmm. to mitigate some of these mm -hmm. challenges. It's it's it is time sensitive. It's not like a facilities or a uh, you know a capital type of expense. It, it's mm -hmm. it, it's a planning, and it needs to be done. To your point, I think mostly, Megan, now mm -hmm. or it needs to be done now if we're going to take that initiative. Mm -hmm. Uh, kind of on the hiring front, we're going to add a, a kindergarten teacher. Say we put it in the budget that we're going to add a teacher to TA. What's the line in terms of when it's almost too late to find a kindergarten teacher? That, if you didn't try to fill that position until July because we waited to see if these numbers change or not, is that too late or is it a situation where you're going to be trying to fill that position in May? For, yeah, for, for a general elementary teacher, I think there's, there's still a fair amount of availability. In a kindergarten teacher, like if you were to say, like replace kindergarten with physics or Spanish <laughs> or EL, I'd say the likelihood of, of us hiring somebody like later in the game is much lower. But like if you, you know, social studies or elementary, we generally still have like a, a, a pretty viable candidate pool. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Any other questions uh, regarding the enrollment of our kindergarten registration numbers? I'm not seeing any. All right, so All right, moving on to, to uh, statement of interest. All right, so statement of interest update. Not, not a real a whole lot new here to report, but I do want to go through what I shared last time, just because I think it's worth repeating. Mm -hmm. um, so two reports kind of drove the project and the statement of interest, and one is the Milford Public Schools Long Range Education Plan, which was completed and approved by the Milford School Committee in 2019. And then the, uh, and then the Center for Living and Working which was an ADA compliance document that also um, was very helpful in this process. Now, you think overcrowding would be one of the priorities of the, uh, the proposal, um, it, but we're experiencing it doesn't fit that classic like, um, definition. Um, so the two pieces, uh, we, we talk about the issues of overcrowding across the district and the statement of interest, and I think bringing the eighth grade over is a driver of, I think, um, reducing some of the stress on um, the other buildings in the district. But the, the two things are really the replacement, renovation, and modernization of a school facility systems, such as roofs, we don't know anything about that, uh, windows, boilers, heating and ventilation systems, um, to also increase energy conservation and decrease energy related costs in a school facility. And it's also a replacement of or addition to obsolete buildings in order to provide for a full range of programs consistent with state and approved local requirements. The other factors that are included or the other arguments are growing and changing student enrollment and population, 
space across the district again is a concern. Facilities that accommodate programs for college bond students and students directly entering the workforce. We have pretty significant limitations, particularly around any expansion of like science, like STEM programming, as well as career focused programming. And some of the spaces we're using now at the high school aren't optimal for either science classes, engineering, computer science. Um, we'd like to do a little more with advanced manufacturing. Um, you know, so I, I think there's some, there's some issues with how education happened in 1973 versus how we're doing things in 2023, particularly at the high school level, that are very different. Um, we moved the Family Resource Center downtown, which opened up some space. That's a relatively you know, new development, and that's worked out very well. I think from a customer service perspective and access for families, but also we have more space down at the preschool. And we've, added, <coughs> we've used one of those spaces for a high school classroom as well. Um, we're installing, like we just talked about, the six modular classrooms during the, the summer, upcoming summer, and, that, and Kathy's gonna talk about that project, I think, in your update a little bit. Um, you know, if we have 400 kindergarten students, that's gonna be a, another challenge we're gonna have to discuss. Um, the other piece that Kathy's going to talk about is we're doing you know some more work on the site, the turf field and track, as well as like the softball field, which are pretty significant kind of upgrades to the, the general um, the general facility. So, um, thank you to the members who provided some feedback, which I incorporated into the um, the new proposal. I also um, got some additional feedback from Kathy, as well as Josh, as well as Mike Powers, who's the uh, head custodian at, at Milford High School, um, and it's really just you know I think the the proposal was good because it got us to the next phase. We just weren't seen as a priority by the by the committee. So I think the, our proposal is, is solid and strong because they, they actually moved us to the, the second phase of the process. Um, the issue we're facing is that every project is very, very expensive now. And, um, you know, are we the most needy in terms of the project that, we, that we're proposing compared to other projects across the state? And we were very close last year but who knows who's, who else is gonna jump into the mix for the, this, this round of, of proposals. And we're, we're not gonna know that until after, you know, after the submission occurs. So it's, it's, it's very hard to predict. Matt? Um, question and a thought to, to, to make me start thinking about, uh, in terms of feasibility study, I know that typically we wouldn't do that until after acceptance in the program. That's because if you do run now, I assume it would expire in a certain amount of time and they would no longer accept it, right? Yeah, and, and they have a very specific, like, if you look at their modules, like how they do things, and I think we have to kind of follow that to participate in the program. And that study gives us more detail in terms of the structure of this building, whether that would be the model and stuff like that, right? That'll give us, that'll answer a couple questions. It'll be, is the site viable? Is there another site viable in the community? Should this be a renovation or, you know, a new building? Sure. And then they'll probably give us some... Um, I think feedback, and Craig can probably answer this because he went through it, I think, intimately with Woodland. But what, what, what types of things could we potentially do with the building? So the reason I ask that is because I think if we're, if we're going at it for what, our third, our third go at it now, yep. um, if we're not accepted again, which is very possible. Um, I wonder when we need to start thinking about the tough decision of whether or not we need to start planning what we can do on our own without MSBA before things get way too bad. Um, and just thoughts to throw out there, does it make sense at some point to start investing in a feasibility study, even if we would have to do the second time from SBA, to get more, a more clear picture about what we could do, or may want to do, um, the roof. The roof warranty expires, and if we don't get accepted for two or three more years, what makes sense? No, this, so this, is, this, is the, this is the bad news there, Matt, is, um, MSBA just extended what they would consider like a, the life of a roof. So I think we're at about year 20, and I, and I can't remember, I, and I wish I had it right in front of me, and I don't, but they've just extended what they consider like a life of a roof. Okay. And I, I can't remember if it was 25 or 30. John, I don't know if you saw that. No, I didn't see that, but I, I, I do have some, you know, uh, I mean, conversation to engage in. Yeah, regardless of their opinion, kind of like what a useful roof is, um, <laughs> ours is, has problems, right? So we may be in a situation where we have to think about planning a capital expense to replace the roof so we can't get it rebuilt. So just some thoughts about what we do next mm -hmm. if the timeline doesn't fall in our favor so we John, okay. please. So, so Matt, parallel, paralleling your thoughts, I brought this up here 
and in our facility subcommittee meeting, we have, I, I think we, as a town, as a committee, and everything else, have to look at just what you're saying. What if we never get accepted? We can't just be like, oh, it's next year, oh, it's next year, and not have a plan B. You know, take the percentage, the MSBA reimbursement is something like 60, 62, 64 percent, and, you know, everybody has a number in their head of what a new high school or renovated high school will be. But what if we never get accepted? We have to take what we think we can afford as a community, working with the finance committee, the finance director, and everybody else. Okay, let's just throw this out. A new high school would be 200 million, and we'd pay 80, whatever the math is. Well, if we don't get accepted into a program, we need to spend 80 on something because we can't just leave it as it is. And, and Chris and I have talked about that uh, in in Jen on the facilities committee, and, and Kevin, of course, too. But yeah, we can't just get lost on, okay, we'll get it next year, we'll get it next year. Um, so we do have to have a, we do have to formulate a plan B, I think. Because uh, wh what if we don't? If we don't, if we don't, we can't, can't leave it. As is doesn't, doesn't go forever. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm, one, I'm totally one possibility, on the One possibility would be that it's been five years since we did the best facility use kind of plan. And that could be something we could look at because that really assesses um, like the major systems and that sort of thing. It's not a full feasibility study. It's nowhere near as expensive as a full feasibility study. Well, but it could give us an updated like, look at the, the process. Well, and and that's, that's the other, I want to address your first point. The feasibility study in accordance with the MSBA program is very specific, right? But we, we may want to commission our own feasibility study in a different sense of What's the, st what's the status, what, what's the condition of all of these buildings, right? Listen, I'm in the building field. I'm not qualified to do a um, invasive um, analysis of the structure of this building. This is a reinforced poured concrete building cast in place with a life expectancy of 50 years. It's 50 years. That's well known in the industry. But once you get past that uh, cliche or buzzword, then you have to get into the investigative or the invasive investigation. And we may want to do that as a committee because this, we think of this place as, a, as you know, a, a bomb shelter, so to speak. It's, it looks so <laughs> substantial, but will it last another 25 or 50 years? And I'm not qualified to, to tell you that by looking at, you know, the walls. I mean, we have spalling concrete, we have rebar that's rusting. We have to think about that and this isn't a, obviously an answer or a discussion for tonight but you raise a, a lot of good points and they've been raised before but we have to not just raise them and let them go we have to look deeper into them I think yeah no, and, and I'm glad that like, that thought's rolling around other people's minds so I, I think we're coming up on time to at least start doing the uh, the work that's not going to cost us a lot of money so we can be ready and, and mm -hmm. start moving forward because you just don't know and especially with that one but the list being shortened too because projects just aren't being finished in time because of material shortages. Correct. Too. And that may just make it harder for everybody. So right. stuff to think about. Okay. So uh, if, I, if I can, I had a question. I mean, I was kind of responding to Matt's or, or, or comment on Matt's comments, but you haven't yet submitted the statement of interest. Now it's coming in a week or two. What's it's next next Friday. It's due. Friday's the. It's re it's ready to go. It's gonna we're gonna put it through a few more reads, but it's. We're going to get the signatures and stuff probably early next week. And um, obviously that's before the deadline. Is that the actual deadline or is there a no, no, the little end, leeway there? No, the deadline you're, is you're being it's, next, it's next Friday at like midnight. Okay. A week from Friday at midnight. Can you circulate, Kevin, the SOI that you plan to submit? I know you sent us last year's, but can you yeah, send us yeah. the latest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brendan? Uh, Kevin, I'm just a quick clarification. You said part of the study if we do to get accepted by the MSBA would also assess different sites around town. Is that correct? Is it That's part of the process, yes. Is typically. it possible that they would say that you should move the high school to a different location and with that question, does it make sense to go through the renovation of the track and field until we have a better clarification what the MSBA would say? So I would say based on our experience with Woodland, it's very unlikely we'd go anywhere else in town. I think, you know, the feeling is it's likely going to be a renovation and if it's you know it is it doesn't end up being a new building it probably be something similar to woodland where we build on the site knock the building down replace the parking that sort of thing yeah, but that's a great, it's a great just, question yeah. just a comment msba doesn't tell us what to do our our own 
feasibility study. The people we hire would, would lay out the options. They just evaluate what we bring forward. So they don't direct us, they evaluate us. I just want to ask a clarifying question to Kevin. I know as part of the prior, this past year's process, they came out. Were mm -hmm. we like officially in the senior study visit? Was that? Yeah. Okay, so we made it to the last. Yeah, we made it to the step before the step. Got it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I feel pretty good about our application. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like that. they bring out sort of a technical expert when they come to do that. Was there anything? A whole group of technical experts. Anything that they identified that we hadn't included in the prior submission that would be valuable to add to this one? I mean, I wasn't a part of that, or I don't believe any of us were a part of that. Yeah, so in terms I think of they felt pretty good about it, Kath. Mm. Generally, they felt like we did a pretty good job of like outlining the issues and lead, like okay. it's funny. Like one of the one of the people wore a GoPro so they could kind of like review the you know the footage of the building and they would take like. You know, went down to the boiler rooms and they took, you know, wherever we went in the building, sure. we took examples of classrooms, that sort of thing. I think sometimes um, when you're always in a building, you forget maybe some of the challenges. So if they called out something, it would be worth just making sure that we're reiterating. Yeah, no, I would definitely, we took notes and there really wasn't anything they said okay. so much. They, they had more questions for us about different things than really. Um, okay. <coughs> I, I think I would just offer, if I can, um, you know, I, you know, you circulated last year's statement of interest and we, we looked at the deficiencies within the building. I, I think you, I mean, maybe you already have, I'm not asking for an answer right now, but when you say our heating systems are failing, I think you need to go much deeper and tell them why, that our copper pipes are within a concrete slab, and when they fail, I know it, it was alluded to, but I think maybe you want to spell it out, uh, just put a lot more detail into why they're failing. It's it's copper pipes and concrete, they never last more than 15, uh, 50 years on average and it's due to the acid in the, in the, in the um, uh, combustion chamber that that develops in the wall I mean I, I mean I could I it is part of my day job I could go on and on but I think you need to I, I think we should highlight that and not just say they're failing and you didn't just say they're failing but I think a much deeper dive into why in substantiation would um, I mean the way I I digest things would go further for me if I was reading you know when, when I read last year's statement of interest, so I'm looking forward to this year's and hoping that you can just drive deeper into into the um, deficiencies because they they're there. We're not embellishing; they're there. No, and they, and they saw them too. Like they were, you know. And and Kathy can back me up on this. Um, the people they brought out were pretty impressive. Like they knew their stuff. Yes. And, and I really feel that eighth grade ad gave us a lot of a merit. Yeah. Because we weren't just solving one issue, we were solving mm -hmm. potentially multiple issues. Mm -hmm. Just to reiterate what John was saying, Kevin, and not to create a lot of work, but I think the SOI needs to stand on its own. Like, we have this team that came out, they may not still work there. So I just want to ensure that the document we're submitting has as much as it can in terms of our challenges. So just to reinforce that, John. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Any other questions regarding the statement of interest? So again, yeah, well, you'll send that out. Yeah, I'll probably send it to people Monday, because we'll probably, yeah. it, it'll probably be pretty close to being ready to go. Oh, one, one yeah. more question: Did did they provide feedback after the submission, like like a written, any kind of analysis? Or they don't do that. They don't do that. Yeah, they just basically say like, um, you know, unfortunately we haven't invited them to the program, um, and they really what they emphasize is, it's it's not so much because um, I think people caught up in it's the wrong word, but they really look at all the projects and say which projects are the most dire, and they kind of work backwards from that, and I think they have a pretty good like. I felt pretty confident based on their assessment that they were kind of, you know, really looking at what we, you know, what our issues were in comparing that to other projects. And like, you know, unfortunately this year, one of the big projects was Brockton, which, mm -hmm. you know, could be a billion dollar project. And that just substantiates what we were talking about earlier. We can't just hold our breath until MSBA invites us in. We have to have a plan B. And well, it's, yeah, because we, we don't know who coming in. And we might be like, we might have been like, you know, if say they brought 11 projects and we might have been number 12 last year, we could be number 13 next year based on like other communities who are saying, hey, we're ready to go now. And, and they have a, a much lower threshold than we do for like, or a higher threshold. Hey, somebody new or applied, they didn't apply last year, they have greater needs. We, we may never yeah, get yeah, there. So, so, yeah, so we, that's, that's to actually. Match, so to Matt's point earlier, we have to, we have to plan and, it, it, you know, I think we all hold this hope, but. We all hold the hope, but it no, can't be the be all end all. We have to have another option. There's no guarantee, and it could be. And I don't want to set up false expectations that we're going to get in next year either, just because we made it to that 
you know, next round of the process. Um, you just don't know. Uh, why don't we have the facilities subcommittee come up with a recommendation for the board? Yeah. We can do the next meeting. We'll, we'll form our we'll facility form subcommittee. Yeah. <laughs> we'll form that. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it, it, again, it speaks to Matt's point of the other, other, if we hired an outside firm to, to get, do a deeper dive into, you know, what John alluded to structurally of the place, does that help us push up in line? So yeah. we invest a little to help get a more comprehensive report and that potentially could make this school building look like it, it needs to be pushed up on the list, you know, as, as being alluded to that other communities could jump in front of us if they actually have a school building that is in more dire need than ours. So, you know, not that it, we want this to be in dire need, but do we need to assess that aspect of the dire need? Yeah. So we'll bring that to the committee also. So one more just follow up, the question about the churn rate. So in 22, our churn rate was 18.9%, and our stability rate was 89.8%. And I can talk about how those are calculated. I don't have that right in front of me. Um, but just to give you a sense of, of where we're at. And, one of the reasons why we're part of the Urban Superintendents Network, one of the factors that they will get is churn rate. We, we do qualify under churn rate. I, I'd, I'd like the background on that, like offline, send an email or something. Cause yeah, I, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I, 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 I yeah. can't fully digest it yeah. here, and I don't want to. Yeah. yeah. But I just want to, I, 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 I could get it, I just couldn't get it while I was talking. And <laughs> right. Thank goodness we're, we're talking about the. Yeah, if you can follow up. Yeah. Whatever. Yep, yeah, absolutely. No uh, any other questions regarding the statement of interest? So, all right. So I'll send you a version of it, a draft version of it on Monday, but it won't be in the same format because I, I can't send it I'll and put it, it in the system. So mm -hmm. if you can imagine the last submission like in the in the format, this is just gonna be like basically a, a PDF of a Google Doc. Mm -hmm. cool. That I'll be popping that I'll be populating those fields with. Right. And that's that's all for me, all I right. believe. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, moving on then to from our report from our assistant superintendent for curriculum instruction and assessment. Thank Dr. you, Mr. Chairman. Um, hopefully I have a couple quick updates for you. First, uh, I wanted to alert the committee that we will be applying for the Open Syed grant. Uh, that's an elementary school grant. Uh, we're going for um, grades three, five. Currently we have Open Syed at the middle school level. Um, it's aligned to our innovative sciences uh, MCAS that we currently are taking to um, it's the right move for us uh, the the issue that I see with the grant right now is um, one of the, the factors for us is we have to have teachers available for the week of August 14th to the 16th so we have to be able to say in our grant that we're going to have a certain number of teachers that are able to attend this training uh, August 14th to the 16th. Obviously, that's before teachers come back from um, break. So that's the challenge we have right now is trying to figure out who's able to um, participate in that professional development in the summer. Um, if we are able to get the, the right number of teachers, then we'll move forward. Um, I think we have a good shot at it just because we got the grant for the middle school as well. Um, I think it, it aligns nicely with... Um, what we're doing at the middle school, I think it'll bring some continuity to our grades three to five. Um, so that submission will go in next couple, I think it's uh, the week before vacation. So next week, uh, anybody have any questions about that? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I, I have a question. I mean, do we, do we have teachers that are, do we have a, in, do we have a feel that we'll have the teachers? Uh, we're will close we? right now, okay. yeah. And just being unfamiliar with the program, I'm just wondering if we get a sense of what it will look like at the school. Yeah, so um, the what they're going to give us is two. So we have to we have to pilot two units per grade level, and it's this. Um, it's like a, a storyline uh, about a phenomena. Mm -hmm. So like one, for example, at the middle school is about hail or about weather. Um, and so it starts off with just talking about weather and then it brings them through a, a storyline like that. So it's based on real world experiences, based on performance assessments. Um, it's hands on, um, but it's not your typical 
um, science project that you would think of where you're following a recipe. So it could have multiple entry points, um, and it's you know built around inquiry and collaboration. And would this take place of the regular science class, or okay? Yeah, yep. Uh, but like I said, it's two units next year, and then the following year it's two more. Okay. And the units are supposed to take. Um, I think they think they say six to ten weeks per unit. Okay. So it should next year it won't fully take the place, mm -hmm. but the year after it should. Okay. And that's our that's what we're doing this year in um, middle school. So. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, second agenda item, um, just an update on MCIA. Um, there, we've had. Well, first of all, just for Brendan, um, <coughs> MCIA is a partnership between um, eight school districts. Uh, in their really in the local teachers union as well and we're trying to work together to create a fair and effective accountability system that offers a more dynamic picture of student quality and learning um, rather than just relying on one single standardized test MCAS um, the first way that we do that is we look at um, teacher created classroom embedded performance assessments so what we just talked about with Open Syed sort of fits that bill. Um, and then the second is just measuring school quality in a way that's more holistic and valid um, than just a standardized test. So that's, we work together as a consortium doing that. Um, in the, over the past, I don't even know how many years we've been a part of it, eight years uh, or seven, We've worked under um, CCE, which is the Center for Collaborative Education. I'm gonna throw a lot of acronyms around. Sorry. Um, You're gonna be tested on this the next time. <laughs> Standardized You may wanna jot a lot of this down. <laughs> um, Not a good test. So, we, as a consortium, we um, are, are being partially, or actually mostly funded now by um, state funds. Uh, and one of the things that uh, some of the senators that supported the bill were sort of upset with us about is that we're not expanding beyond our consortium. I think um, I think COVID had a lot to do with that. I think COVID um, slowed us down a little bit. Um, but to some extent, I think CCE um, contributed to that. And the reason I think that in, in me and others in the consortium think that is because the mission of CCE is one of equity, which is sort of it's one of our missions as well but it's not the mission our mission is to create a fair equitable accountability system which is not CCE's current mission um, CCE's mission sort of changed when Dan French who was the executive director retired and this new person came on board as an executive director Dan French and Jack Schneider who were the founders of um, MCIA they they are now they formed this other group called ECP which is the um, what does it stand for the Education Commonwealth um, Partnership or Project Education Commonwealth Project so they formed their own um, and their their role was to take the tools that MCIA created and expand it to other districts so they got part of MCI's funding last year fall so far everyone <laughs> yeah so um, this year we see the work that ECP is doing and we see that it's aligned more clearly to what we're, our mission is so we've had discussions about leaving CCE and moving over to ECP um, however before we could actually leave CCE told us that they were no longer going to support us so that actually left the door open for us to leave so, currently we are in um, conversation with ECP about transitioning over to ECP. Now, the bonus of joining ECP is um, it'll renew our commitment to the vision, the original vision. Um, Jack Schneider is housed out of UMass Lowell, so it'll open up um, all, the, all that UMass Lowell has to offer to our consortium. Um, 
I think it brings greater organizational synergy instead of having the two different groups now we're under the one. Um, and then I also think that with ECP, we also go after some of the fundraising and um, just general um, interests. We have shared interests that um, I don't think we had with CCE. Um, so I think it's a win for us. Uh, I think one of the things that is promising for us is in the the budget proposal this year, the the governor accepted straight away the amount to give to MCIA where usually it gets vetoed and it has to get put back in by the House. So the governor uh, approved it right off. So I think that's good for us. Um, I also think that there's we're gaining a little bit of momentum um, with just performance assessments generally. I think people, there's a there's an interest in it, uh, I think, across the state, but across the nation too. So, I think um, I think all, I think we're pointed in the right direction at, with this consortium. Can I throw one more thing out there? Um, this work's being um, that's that's being done in Milford is being recognized not only at the state level but at the national level. And and two of our teachers were just highlighted, uh, and, and and I think a lot of you've seen them present before. But Dan Cody and Alyssa Holland were just highlighted in a national magazine about their work around performance assessments yep. and. Mm -hmm. And the work around the consortium that Craig's kind of leading in the district. Matt. Uh, first, I want to add a flow chart of a fancy screen next time. That would be yeah. one of your <laughs> sure. slides would be excellent up there. Careful to ask for. No problem. Just, uh, Heat map. Somebody <laughs> wants yeah. Craig's PowerPoints yeah. back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> great, 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 great PowerPoints. Right. Um, <laughs> is the ultimate goal of the organization to, to bring a system forward at the state level that would be accepted and replaced potentially on the past? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I've said this before, I like to think that the current science um, innovative assessment was co sort of spawned from MCIA because a lot of what they're doing is, um, seems like it came from, from us. Maybe I'm wrong, but. No, I think you're right. Seems no, that way. <laughs> Excellent. Any other questions or comments? All right. Thank you very much for the update. Appreciate it. All right. Welcome. Moving on then to the report from our Assistant Superintendent for Business and Human Resources, Mrs. Perry. So, thank you. So for the committee's approval this evening, I have six warrants in the amount of $857,852.60. Excellent. Looking for a motion to approve the warrant. Motion by Robin, second by Michael. All in favor? And that is unanimous. I also have a request for course reimbursement um, in the amount of $6,343. Right. Looking for a motion to accept. Motion by Matt, second by Michael. All in favor? And that is also unanimous. Uh, you also have the, a list of the latest appointments since our last meeting. No vote is required. Um, we do have a request from our math director. She has um, inventoried um, a lot of math materials that she would like declared surplus so that she can make room for the new materials coming in for the next school year. And that does require a vote due to the fact that it is a surplus. Right. Looking for a motion to accept. Motion by Brendan. Okay. Second by Robin. All in favor? Those are names. Can I just ask a question on that, Chris? Sure, of course. Kathy, are we providing all students graphing calculators? Is that what this is? These are the old ones that are no longer functioning? They're, they're outdated. So as a general matter, students are provided the devices? Correct. I, I remember seeing something in our, like they're hanging on the wall. So everyone that needs one is getting one. That's correct. Covered. We have funding or we've approved funding for that. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Chris. I asked that same yeah. question. Okay, thank you. And they're almost the same cost as a Chromebook. Well, right. yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. Can't be Serious question. Can't the Chromebook have a graphic calculator app? I, 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 I wish that were so. I'm yeah. not sure why. I it, don't think so. I'm looking more at you because I feel like you might know the answer. Yeah. I don't know. And I'm trying to rem Well, I bought a graphic calculator. That's why. So I'm trying to remember if we sure struggled or not. 
but I don't think you can. I think there was some limitations within the Chromebook. You could, you'd have to use an out. You'd have to use a um, a website, and again, then it then it kind of probably muddies the the muddies what a student's looking at during a test time mm -hmm. by needing sure. that by needing that graphing calculator. So could be a business opportunity for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Brookside Elementary Modular Project is that they'll be on site um, the April vacation where we don't have any students to start a little site prep work. Um, and I believe on, what was it, Monday or Tuesday night, we went to the planning board? Tuesday. Tuesday for our permitting, and I think that passed. Yeah, John. so our town engineer prepared the plan. Um, it, 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 it's really not much of a change in use of that site the site doesn't change the fire lane stays the same it just it's kind of a formality that our planning board has to approve the the additional expansion of the footprint of the building and they did that on Tuesday night is my understanding perfect Kelly, can I ask a question on that sure remind me do the modulars have facilities or everything's connected to the building you would have to go in to wash your hands use the bathroom we have added three uh, sinks through the hallway, okay. um, outside of each bank of classrooms, okay. um, as well as, um, and then in terms of the restrooms, the you do have to go right the, outside right. into the hallway of the Brookside building. And it's pretty much right when you come inside. It and is. Yeah, okay. And we did get approval through the Board of Health that that met the requirements of the number of individuals in the building. Okay. And it's not dissimilar from some of the classrooms that are like, distance from bathrooms either. And I don't recall this, Kevin. Do the classrooms in Brookside tend to have a restroom in the classroom for kindergarten? kindergarten? kindergarten so we back. wouldn't want to necessarily so we're probably not move kindergarten use them to the for modular. Okay. Classrooms, but yep. again, you know, we're still looking at it. Understood. Thanks. The turf and the track update, as well as the softball field lighting update, is that I'm in the process of putting together three rather large bid uh, packages for all three of those projects. Um, my goal is to have them done next week and have them in the um, central register for uh, available for pickup the following week. Um, so that's that update. Um, it's just labor intensive. Uh, the we do not have any gifts this evening, um, and that's all I have. And timeline-wise, we're good on all those projects right now. I can say mm -hmm. even even the tariff from the track that's still yes. even though we haven't sent out to bid we're still looking for that July August window. And this to, is a labor bid. Well, exactly. So we were able to incorporate all of the equipment needed for the projects under what we refer to as the source well uh, collaborative purchasing. So I've already ordered all of the equipment for the turf and the track. I just need to go out to bid for the labor because the state requires that as a separate. Uh, bid. Okay. Competitive bid, I should say. Right. Appreciate that clarity. Any, go ahead, Megan. Just a, a comment, and I think you've already done this, Kevin. I'm just wondering if there's a way to do it at the broader town level. I just think it's super important that we communicate this because some people could be surprised when they go to use the track and it's not available. So just Milford TV, just whatever mechanisms we have available to communicate the time frame that folks will not be able to use that property. Yeah, we'll be able to do that. Thanks. I would just piggyback on that, sorry, quickly about Brookside and the playground in the summer. I know the neighborhood's around the end of there a lot. We've got some fencing we can put up. To what? <laughs> some temporary fencing and some signage to warn people that they may not want to be around the pack of groups. Yeah. But fencing will work. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, go so ahead. Quick question back to the track and turf. Um, and I don't know if this was included in the initial uh, funding of this. Is there any um, additional equipment we're purchasing outside of the actual materials for the project? So, for example, uh, new hurdles or high jump mats or uh, protective material for the field goal post, things of that nature? No. Okay. Uh, that would be a separ separate capital S, so you have to be very clear and defined in your warrant article. We did not bring in any athletic equipment replacement. Understood. Is that, do you know if there's a, a need for that, or is that a current equipment suitable for the needs of the schools? I think the athletic director reviewed all of the, what's going to be reused, okay. and um, he didn't request anything additional, Brendan. So Co I think Coach right Boucher now. Coach is a track guy too, so he, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a track guy, so gotta make sure that. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Excellent. Any other questions regarding um, Brookside Edition?
turf, uh, the track update, the turf update, and softball field lighting? Mm -hmm. Just a few projects. Small. Just a few. It's okay. A <laughs> couple of small ones. Thank exactly. you. Again. So, all right, and no gifts. So, all right. Thank you for that update. All right, moving on. Uh, subcommittee updates. Any subcommittees that had met since our last meeting on April six? Not seeing any. So, all right. Um, I guess I'll, I'll throw this under the just from the subcommittee update. Um, I haven't heard anything from, from budget-wise. Um, we actually just talked about it before, too, this meeting. Um, I'm going to reach out to FinCom and their budget subcommittee just to see uh, where they're at. I know I've seen a few meetings posted by them um, to review our budget, but again, I haven't heard anything from them, so um, no news is good news from that. Uh, and then also we have a um, meeting with the Capital Budget Subcommittee, FinCom uh, Committee, on Wednesday the 13th. So. Um, any committee members that can join would be great for support. Uh, from there. All right, future agenda items. Any future agenda items? Michael. Um, so in the past couple of months, in talking to uh, Jerry, he's trying to retire. Um, and I think, there's, uh, I think we need to have a discussion as a board about what do we do when Jerry does retire. It, 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 um, so I think the next meeting or two, we should have a discussion on legal counsel for the board. Mm -hmm. There's a chance you could retire before Jerry does. <laughs> it's, there's no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Noted. All right. So I, I'm, I'm open for that discussion. I just wasn't aware that he had any you know, immediate yep. or imminent plans of retirement from the labor board. But yeah, I'm absolutely uh, in favor of talking about that. Further. It's for the discussion. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other? Yes, Megan. So I think we already have it, but just confirming yeah. we're going to talk K to two enrollment as well as in conjunction with the budget. Exactly. The other yeah. item I asked Kevin, and it's just it's heartbreaking to me to mention, but can we just get an overview of sort of our emergency procedures in terms of who in each building is responsible for developing them? And the last time they were each reviewed, just with the shelter in place at the high school, someone had mentioned to me that there were students sitting in the library. And I'm just kind of curious, just kind of understanding what level of scrutiny has been taken a look at at those plans and that we're, we're comfortable with how they are. Yeah, and, it, and just to clarify, for a shelter in place, the students just stay where they are. Mm -hmm. So if they're in the library, they stay in the library. There. If, there's, mm -hmm. if there's some other issue that occurs, we, we adjust based Got on it. Um, to actually compound on that, um, also explain that apparently there's different shelter in places. Um, so I'd like to understand, because I always thought shelter in place is you know, imminent danger, threat to your life, but apparently there's other sh shelter in places. So it'd be nice to understand what all those are and maybe we can board them differently. Yeah. I don't know. Let's just, yeah. And, and we use shelter in place a lot just when there's a medical emergency yeah. too. And I think I shared that with some of the, mm -hmm. and that's a somewhat frequent thing that happens. Um, and it's just to keep the hallways clear. So medical or emergency personnel can right. get in. The person has privacy with whatever issue they're dealing with. I just have, I just have a comment. I don't think that um, we should be going into any detail about any of this on TV. I don't think we want to talk about the procedures, Craig, more yeah. the overview of yeah. what we have in place. I, you know what I can do is I can probably give a, a broad overview of what we do in terms of safety and security, mm -hmm. if that's yeah. helpful. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm pretty good about not sharing what I can't share. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, I, it's I'm, a great call. Yeah, I don't want details. I just want to know what they are, how, how they're doing, the review yeah. process, blah, blah. Okay. I don't want to know details. Understandable. Yeah, and, and, I, and I will say that we've, we've definitely moved away from, like, the, pl the one plan for every building, every situation okay. that we um, that we publicized to everybody. Got it. For pretty obvious reasons. Yep. Thanks. All right. Great. Anything else? Um, the only other thing I, I know I'll have uh, subcommittee assignments. I'll move those if there are um, any subcommittees that someone would like to be on or moved off of, please let me know. Just curious if we would want to wait until the contract's ratified because that could be changing. <laughs> we could we could do everything but maybe something that gets added or changed if you want to do that. I'll just leave it there. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's no worries. If we want to wait, I think, I think what we'll do is maybe <laughs> do the ones we can assign and totally then maybe wait on the ones that yeah. totally right have to wait on. Right. Got it. No worries. Just want to flag that. In that same yeah. spirit of safety and security overview. <laughs> Understandable. All right. 
Excellent. Anything else on the future agenda? Not seeing any. So that will move us on then to adjournment. So um, at this time, we'll, we'll, we will be ending the open session of our meeting and entering executive session where we will discuss MTA negotiations update and consider and discuss allegations possibly resulting in the disciplinary action against a school employee. Uh, going into the executive session is, requires a roll call vote and we will not be returning to open session. Is that over with Brendan? Yes. Robin? Yes. yes. Megan? John? Yes. Michael? Yes. Matt? Yes. And I am also a yes. Have a good night, everyone.